this morning and uh, we're hoping to catch a really good weather window to travel down to the southern Lao group. We're going to start at Fulanga and uh, we've heard that quite a few other boats are going down there as well from various places. All still over this eastern side of Fiji though so we're quite confident that no one's got COVID. And from what I understand, the Lao group are absolutely stunning. And it's uh, a bit difficult these days because we can't just go and visit the villages like we would have been in the past. It means that we can't enjoy Sivu Sivu with the uh, locals, which is their custom of sharing kava with their guests. I mean, that's just the way things are, really. We just have to roll with the punches while COVID is such a problem here. There's three boats from our last anchorage that are all going with us. One's ahead of us, one's behind us. And Dave's just been on the radio chatting to the one behind, talking about how, you know, if you get a few boats in a row, it turns into a race. So they've had a good chuckle about, about that. And uh, so Dave's just going to put a line out and uh, see if we can catch some fish on the way to our next stop. And um, we're just waiting out here with Shinamia and Imagination and Peregrine are on their way. They're just a smidge behind us. But uh, we really can't wait to get inside and get anchored and, wow, start playing. <laughs> can't wait. It's been a really good sail. It's been one of our better sails, although, again, into wind. Overnight, the wind got a little bit more lively. We had a bit more gust in the sails, about 18 knots apparent, so we were flying a bit. But uh, this morning, we slowed right down. And we were travelling between sort of fours and sixes. Now we're just going to sit here probably for another hour, just wait for the sun to come up a little bit more, and that way it'll just make our traverse through the shallow water and the bombies a little easier. Oh my gosh, look at that water. That's pretty sweet. Oh my gosh, you can see the but coming, anchor, easy. But coming in the pass, I could see the bottom at 35 metres and it looked like it was six metres deep. Um, it's just pretty deceptive, you know? You look down and you think it's um, a lot shallower than it really is. Here's Che. He just arrived and he's off to go and introduce himself to other boats. The pass into Fulanga looks spectacular, so it didn't take long for us to get out there with our snorkeling gear. So we've been ashore and found the right kind of coconut and then I husked it on the beach because I found a sharpened stick that was on the shore or just in the tree line with a whole bunch of husks around it so obviously the village here come across and they husk their coconuts at it so I just did like the locals do when in Rome. 
and then we've come home. Oh, I bashed it open with a machete. And now we're just peeling. Oh, I took the, the hard coconut shell off around the coconut, the back of the boat. And now we're just peeling the coconut to um, just make these thin little slithers. And we're just going to dry them in the sun when the sun comes out again. If it comes out. Yep. And then we may have to bake them a little bit just to make them nice and crispy. And, uh, and they just make the most awesome treat. Might throw them in salads, use them as snacks. It's really yummy. But I tell you, it's a lot of work <laughs> to get these little snacks. But anyway, that's what we're doing. Yummo. Nina from Anola, she's just giving this wing of ours a go. They've got a foil board as well. Scott's out there. He's giving his board and wing a go. We're just learning, aren't we, Nina? I think that was skill number one that Kostya told me was turning the thing over. <laughs> and apparently we'll do a lot of that. Here comes Scott. Hey, buddy. And uh, Dave said you got up on the foil. Oh, for a yeah. couple of seconds. <laughs> right. No, no, a millisecond. Hey, that's more than we've done. <laughs> do you hold it at the front of the spot or do you come down onto here? Come down onto here. Okay, yeah. so when you the the front is just to, um, just to get up. Get so you can just feather it. Yeah. <laughs> Does it feel strange? Yeah, wakeboarding any day, huh? <laughs> okay. Whoa! <laughs> Crazy driver. There you go, there is some wind. out of so far? Caramelised onions in the frying pan, but because the frying pan and the caramelised onions were the same colour, didn't really stand out very well. Ah, oh, so. okay. All right. Well, today it's shells and coral then. Yes. Brilliant. This is global warming. You're going to lose your world in a minute. Whoa, we're going to lose. Oh, oh my gosh. That's, that's the world gone. <laughs> Of the Pacific Islands, she's got up into Asia and Japan. Go, Dave. That one went, didn't it? Even shut itself down, which is a worry. 
God, it's so frustrating. They're taking ages to start at the moment, but we've got Zephy up the front. She's on the anchor. After a week in picturesque Fulanga, we moved out through the pass and travelled a short distance to Wangia. into this beautiful anchorage but there's quite a few boats in here already and there's quite a few dotted um, bobbies around and we have just had massive problems with our poor engine just as I slowed down to come in here um, it died so I had no engine to steer with um, you know uh, poor engine to steer with but um, I had starboard still working and uh, really we just had to dodge the other boats dodge the other um, dodge the bombies and uh, not anchor where we wanted to. So we're anchored in 2.7 at the moment, uh, 2.6 when we drop the anchor and um, this is not really where we want to be, it's a bit, a bit rocky, you can see the monohulls are kind of going over a bit but um, we've just got to sort out what this problem is with our poor engine, I don't know why it keeps turning off. We have had a bit of trouble trying to turn them on as well. So. And we checked our starter battery before we left New Zealand, or both of them, and they were fine. So, I don't know. There's always a puzzle to have to work out, isn't there? Anyway, let's go and see how uh, what he comes up with. So Dave's down in the engine bay, and he's trying to change the fuel filters and just see if that's the reason why our poor engine keeps cutting out. At the most inopportune moments, too, eh, Dave? Yeah. Right. Can you take that? Yeah, of course. There's a handle there. That's oh, right, I got it. So we've been a bit inconvenient to everybody because we've just anchored right in the entrance, um, basically because we lost an engine and couldn't get it started again. So um, as soon as we get that organised and fixed, really, we'll move a little bit further in where the swell doesn't bother us so much and leave some space for these monos that are coming in. But I feel a bit rude right now because we've just anchored right in the entrance. Well, thereabouts. I'm just trying to find out what the starter problem is. Yeah. It's not obvious, it's a horrible one. Okay. So I'm just getting the girls to help. Well, me. you couldn't be working in a better um, spot though, could you? Oh, I know. I mean, look at the scenery, it's really awesome. It's pretty good. It'd just be easier if I knew what the problem was. So everyone's doing some jobs. Zephy's around the corner. What are you doing, Pop It? Um, I am the man who um, transfers the missiles. I'm the messenger. Oh, you're the relay? She's the yeah. relay because there's no way anyone will be able to hear anything. Okay, I'll go and see P and see what job she's got. So, Priya, what's your job? Pressing the buttons. <laughs> as soon as it's on, start playing with the ignition. Nothing. Nothing's happening. I changed both the fuel filters on the engines and I hoped this would stop the engines from dying in tricky places. Only thing left to figure out was why they were so difficult to start. And it turns out it was a worn out electrical relay. Join us next time for more of the Lau Group. <laughs>